talking about? We're talking about the 12 new patterns for layering oh. stencils. Yes, 12 new patterns for layering stencils. Super excited about this because it's, um, it's, it's in celebration of my birthday and uh, because I'm happy to have these for my birthday, uh, right? Yeah, I mean, happy birthday to you. Thanks. And then, well, so my birthday is July 13th and Gustav Klimt's birthday is July 14th. Uh, we're like that. And um, so, uh, for we all have delusions. <laughs> So we did, a, we, we, in homage to Klimt, we used some metallics in these, um, with these patterns for layering. And um, I also combined with some of my original Klimt collection um, stencils, the larger stencils and masks, I combined with these patterns for layering stencils. So I got everything all tied in. Yes, you do. And now while I didn't use metallic paint, I did use a lot of the Distress Mica Stains, which means I've got lots of sparkle going on and Klimt might not have had them, but I do, so I use them. While Elizabeth is going to show you how she layers them with some of the Klimt designs, and obviously anything work with a big opening works, it doesn't have to be Klimt, I'm gonna spend some time and I'm gonna show you how you can just use them. Oh, Here, I have longer arms. Yeah, everybody has longer arms than me. How you can <laughs> use them. To, well, that's well, no, that goes that way. I don't remember which way it goes. How you can use them like you would any other stencil so that you have these 12 new designs available to you. Here's another one. And you, you can use them just like you would any other stencil. So there's lots of fun ways to create pattern with these. This is one of my favorites. And there's sparkle on there. I don't know if you can see it. So obviously, just as they always are, thank you, thank you, these are full size nine by 12 stencils, so you can do just about anything with them. You want just one? Here, watch oh, that one going. since it's I loose. One. Look at that. Great patterns to yep. layer. Yep, absolutely. And so layer them, use them with your normal processes. You'll see me spray through them and you'll also see me apply paint through, uh, through the stencil openings with a mini ink blending tool. Anything you can think of that you want to do with these, you're gonna be able to. Do you think we could put frosting through them and put them on a cake? No, but I did put texture paste through them, so that works too. Did you put texture paste on a cake? Listen, sister, <laughs> put it on a tag. Cut yourself lucky I got that far. <laughs> you know that they, uh, that they, uh, that fondant that they put on wedding cakes has like a six year shelf life. Don't eat that. How is that relevant to this conversation? I don't know, it just popped in my head. Uh, this is what I do on a regular <laughs> basis when we're together. And if she's not being nuts, it's my turn. So it's just nuts all around. Well, we're also easily distracted because to be honest, the entire time we've been here, we have been um, really coming up with a lot of creative ideas. Like, well, oh, what about this? Oh, we should do that. Oh, we, we need to do this. And we have like lots of distractions, creative distractions, and lots of more projects. Yes, oh, wait till you see some of the stuff we're dreaming up. I think you're gonna enjoy it. Yeah. But that's a little ways down the road, so don't hold your breath because it's gotta get worked on. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, endless creativity. Yep. All right, well, uh, let's go mess around with this stuff. That sounds good to me. Okay. All right, let's go. So I'm super excited to announce my latest release of new stencil designs in celebration of my birthday and Gustav Klimt's birthday. My birthday, July 13th, Gustav Klimt, July 14th. So we're gonna be working with some layering of these new stencil patterns with some Klimt stencil patterns. So I have been playing with this one, which is the looking glass, and also this one, which is the serpents. And somewhere in this tangled mess is the third one, which is the Tree of Life. So I decided to combine the, these three Klimt masks along with these patterns for layering in honor of our birthdays. The patterns for layering, layering were great layered over one another and layered over with masks and stencils that have large open areas. So small patterns for large open area combinations. This one is a combination of two or three of the patterns for layering with metallic paint mixed in and several of the patterns combining to create this wonderful kind of woven effect. 
This one is a nice dark kind of grayish black. It is two patterns for layering over a slate gray base color. This one is the, this is the uh, same pattern with the flowers. That one, this one is on top of the serpent's climped mask in metallic gold, which is opaque. So it stands up over the teal and over the serpent's mask pattern. And there's also another pattern underneath in the teal that you can see very subtly. Here's the tree of life over some ghost prints of pattern for layering. And this is the ghost print of the tree of life. This one is a really lovely color combination of red, orange, gold, and teal. And that has the looking glass spirals underneath with some patterns for layering on top in the opaque gold. Here I've got looking glass underneath with teal patterns for layering on top. Again, I've got looking glass with a copper pattern for layering on top. That's beautiful the way it lets the dark purple show through the copper patterning. Here again, we've got looking glass with the argyle pattern for layering on top. And this is looking glass on itself. So slightly shifted and printed a second time gives it sort of a three-dimensional effect and the uh, argyle pattern for layering on top. Here's the serpents with patterns for layering underneath and then serpents printed with opaque. So the only place you see the patterns is in the mask itself. And lastly, I have a nice small pattern for layering that is underneath the tree of life. So it shows up through all the openings in the mask and that nice little small pattern. So the patterns for layering come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes. We've got some with great big openings and then I've got uh, some with much smaller openings and sort of everything in between. We've got this one, which is a lot of fun, and then just more patterns. And another one I really like is this one. They're all tangled. This one with the lines and the dots. And this is another Klimt stencil that I was layering with these. This is Mirror Mirror. The spirals are always tricky. This is why I store them with mylar in between so they don't get tangled. So I did use a lot of the mirror, mirror mask and this one with the straight lines is a lot of fun. Let me show you that one. I created this print with that one, which I really like. I did this over itself in two different tones. So sort of a blackish gray and a copper over a rose gold. So those are the prints that I have been making in honor of Klimt's birthday and celebrating my birthday with a new launch of stencil and patterns for layering. So I'm going to work with the mirror, mirror, I'm sorry, the looking glass and this one, which the name of it is escaping me right now. And I'm going to work in metallics to honor our favorite artist who used a lot of gold. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put down a nice layer of gold, cover the plate, and I've got two sheets of nine by 12 rice paper from my favorite pad. So I'm gonna get a little, put a little bit more in this. We're in Arizona, so the paint dries kind of quick. So I'm gonna go a little heavier with my coverage than I would at home. Then I'm gonna put the looking glass into the gold metallic and I've got two sheets of paper. I've got one for the main print and one for the ghost print. So the first print I'm gonna pull is the main print and hopefully there'll be enough paint that doesn't dry on the back of the stencil to give us a good ghost print. So there's a great first print of the looking glass and we do have a decent amount. Let's see how that transfers for the ghost print. Subtle, but definitely there. Okay, so then um, each of these I'm gonna put on top working with copper a smaller pattern for layering. So the first one 
I'm going to put this on, I think, on our first print. So this is one of those techniques you do have to play with. It doesn't work for me even um, every time I do it. It works most of the time, but not, not every time. So here's our metallic copper. And I'm gonna start with this kind of cool, large shape and put that onto the ghost print. And you'll notice that I started on a white sheet, which is not what I normally do. And there's a reason for that. Okay, so this probably pretty much obliterated my looking glass underneath there. So let's try and put it on this one if there's more paint there. That ghost print of the looking glass was just not strong enough to hold up against that. Well, we'll try the ghost print of that on here. That's pretty good. Okay, so we've got two pretty good layers of metallic on white on this one. On this one, I think I'll have to go over it with a gold print. So let's try this on top. So we'll put out the gold, which is mixing a little bit in with the copper. So I'm gonna put a little bit more out, see if we can lighten that up. And so for this second one, we'll just do two layering pattern stencils together. So for these patterns for layering, many of them have very small openings. So you want, because they're small patterns for um, combining with large patterns, so you're gonna get the best results if you use your fingertips to press down in between all the little openings and then check before you dismount the paper. But use the tips of your fingers to get down in between all these small spaces. And we've got good double pattern, double metallic pattern on that one. So we're just gonna move the gel plate to the side. And now I'm gonna bring in, I'm working on my nonstick craft mat surface here, which is nice. And now I'm gonna bring in, I've got a cup of water and a large paintbrush, and I'm gonna bring in some dark colors to contrast with these. So the first one I'm gonna do is a nice dark purple. It is permanent red, blue, violet. So I'm gonna put that out and add water with my paintbrush and paint over. Okay, so now we're gonna paint over the metallic. The cool thing about, you see me often doing this from the back and you can do that as well, but the watery wash over metallic paint, the paint never wants to stick to the metallic. So you can do it over the front. And when you do it from the front, you do get a little bit of this luscious purple color, kind of tinging the metallic a little bit, uh, but it doesn't stick to it as long as you add enough water. So I love this technique, especially with the metallic because the color doesn't stick to it. And I'm using a nice dark color that contrasts very highly with the gold and the copper. I think that's key for this to work is since the gold and the copper are so light and so reflective that they look really good when you contrast with a darker color. Now that I needed a little bit more water, but the dark is really dramatic with that metallic. And you'll see it's, it's tinting the metallic a little bit on the front surface, but not much. The metallic really shows up. The watery color uh, soaks through the back, so you're gonna have purple edges when you tear this. And we've got those two kind of great layering stencil patterns here in the metallics in honor of Klimt. So our next one, this one has two small layering patterns. And let's go with a different darker color. How about some dark blue? So for this one, I'm gonna put together, and it doesn't, the whole sheet doesn't even have to be the same dark color. You can move around from blue to purple. Ooh, this is kind of a greenish blue. You could make the, your brush on color, uh, multiple colors on the same sheet. So this is a more of a greenish blue than I anticipated, but it's a good contrast with the yellow. 
and I'm just pulling a lot of water through it. You can press it over onto the other half itself. And you can see the two patterns for layering and that ghost print that I didn't think sh was showing up all that well of the looking glass. Well, here it is. It's showing up now while we add this dark blue for contrast. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of that purple in there as well. Show you that we can bring the purple in and mix it with the blue. And I like to go right out to the edges because you never know, you might use that edge where the metallic meets the edge of the paper, kind of trails off softly. That edge could be really nice in collage. So I'm gonna make sure I tint out all the way to the edges so that I can use that. If I'm looking for, look at how beautiful that is. When I'm looking for the metallic pattern to end softly, I'll come out around the edges of my gel print. So I always wanna add full color out there. So here we've got a beautiful looking glass spirals and two patterns for layering in the metallic color palette in honor of Gustav Klimt's birthday and this fun new stencil release in honor of my birthday. So that is a lot of fun. I really like working with metallics and having them contrast with dark, colors. These new patterns for layering stencils are perfect for the kinds of things that Elizabeth designed them for, but as with the Dorothy collection, I want to show you that you can use them like you would any stencil so that, yes, you can layer them, but if you want to use them alone, they're perfectly suited for that as well. So here, and I'm not remembering any of the names, but here you can see I've used this vertical design, and then in the back here, you can really see the design there because a lot of it has been covered. So this I'm going to show you. I think that black makes for drama when you add it, especially to something bright and colorful like this really stands out and the white dots help and I'm also going to show you what I think of as the spit spray and not the spit the spray and flip technique so let's start with sp spray and flip <laughs> I have this design and what I'm going to do is pick a couple of colors. Now, Klimt obviously was very heavily involved with metallics and while he probably didn't have access to mica stains that's what I'm using kind of as an homage to him because I love metallics. And so he and I would have gotten along quite well. All right, I'm just gonna pick a couple here and get started spraying. So I'm gonna lay the stencil down. Now I'm gonna spray kind of heavy, which is fine because I'm not looking for perfect results. And that one is clogged even though I cleaned it a moment ago. So we'll just move on to this one. All right, so there's that. And we'll put some of this on. And you can see that there's a fair amount that's accumulated here. So what I'm going to do, you, how cool is that? Pick this up, pick that up, grab a piece of paper towel and kind of wipe this up. Although I gotta tell you, there are times, and let me just grab a, another tag that has nothing on the back. There are times this design is absolutely worth picking up if you can make it happen. So I can lay this in here, go ahead and give it a press. And while it's never going to be a perfect transfer, it's pretty darn close and none of that goes to waste, which of course is always a good thing. So let's just, for the sake of argument, we're gonna wipe this up. And I'm gonna walk off camera for a second. I need to get another color of spray because it can't be one of the two I already used. All right, I'm shaking as I come back on camera. So now what I'm gonna do, I've got all that stuff here. So what I'm gonna do is print it. Now the key with this is not to just lay the stencil down. You really need to take a moment, and I like to do this with a paper towel. Just lay this down and go ahead and press. The color will not transfer if well if it doesn't come into contact with the surface underneath. So that's what you need to do is press. Now I'm gonna take this color and I'm going to drop the paper towel because this is the way it's going today. And then now I've got an accumulation of color on here. And how cool is that? So I've got the other colors are in the background and the one that I just sprayed is now the, sorry, my brain just stopped. It is now the positive of the design. All right, so let's get this out of the way. Now you can go and go and go when you do spray and flip. I'm not gonna keep going and going, but you understand the process of how this works. So let me get rid of this wet stencil. And then let's bring in 
a couple of other things. I want to show you that spray and flip doesn't necessarily have to be done on a tag. Here's the first one that I sprayed through the stencil, and then I turned it over and printed. This is Elizabeth's favorite rice paper. So you can do this. Now I will say that these are not necessarily prints that I'm gonna use for anything. I've discovered that I like to take these to the side and use them as roll off sheets. And I get layers of shiny paint on there and sparkly paint, and suddenly they become good for lots of other things. You can tear them up and use them for backgrounds or really whatever it is that you want. This is, I put a really thin coat I don't know that you're going to be able to see it, but this is a really thin application of the Ranger Opaque Texture Paste. That's what this one is. So you can do that. And I just came and I sprayed some of the mica stains on that and let them accumulate and kind of flow into one another. More of the, where am I here? More of the, okay, you know what? Before I talk about flip and spin or sp <laughs> spray and flip, this is one little tiny section you can see right here. I turned it vertically and went ahead and just put color through the stencil with a mini ink blending tool. So you don't have to use the stencil in its entirety. You can pick a piece that you like and use it that way. And then this is some sparkly stuff that I put through one of the other stencils. This is a really tiny pattern. So it sparkles, but it's not in your face. This is another print when I flipped, but I didn't spray again. This is through the stencil. This has just got stuff on the back. And sometimes it's fun to just do a single spritz. You don't have to flip and then spray. You can do this and get a really nice background that is very simple and doesn't start to get all crazy like this. But if you're looking for crazy, this is certainly a way to do it. So again, these are lots of examples of spray and flip and the ways that you can kind of get that going. So the last thing, obviously now, let's bring in another stencil. These are my samples you've already seen. Let's go ahead and move this stuff out of the way. Give me one second here. I just need to spritz one thing, two things, I lied. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is bring in, this is Justina Wakely's black paint. I have a mini ink blending tool. Let's get this out of the way. A mini ink blending tool, and I'm going to use that to apply black through this stencil, because again, in my mind, black equals drama, and sometimes you really want that kind of contrast. All right. When you do this, you need to kind of put this in a little bit at a time and blend it around so that ultimately the entire foam pad gets color on it. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I'm just going to come and get some drama going and let it play across the stencil however it kind of goes. I can pick up some more here. Obviously too much of the paint is liable to cause creepage, so I'm trying to be careful about not doing that. And I think that's good. It gives me, you know what, let's put some right there. It gives me an area in the middle, how cool is that? That I can do something. I've got this little path that runs through here that I can place something on. If I wanted to write in there, I could grab a black um, Posca paint pen and do that, or I could place some other elements in here. But either way, I've got drama and I can enhance that further by coming in like I did here with a white Posca pen and going ahead and dotting things. So there are however many of these there are, I don't really remember. I've lost track because we've been playing with so many stencils these last few days. But Yes, they were designed for layering, but oh boy, are they great for all kinds of normal things that you would do too. All right, so this is the end of the road <laughs> for this trip, for this trip. We have been here for days on end messing up this Airbnb. Now we have to spend six hours cleaning up. It could be worse. Could be worse. We're going to tag team it, get it done. But this is um, this is our last uh, video from Sedona this trip, mm -hmm. and um, we'll be back again in the fall yes, um, to do more uh, to make more mayhem, mixed media mayhem. There you go. In the, the three Airbnb. M's. Yeah. yeah. There you go. <laughs> and you never know. There might be something else that comes up in the interim. It depends on how the plans work out. So don't be surprised if you see us again before the fall. Yeah. Don't be surprised if you see us again before the fall. Aren't you coming to my house? I was thinking about it. Mmm. Mixed media mayhem in, in waiting. In Sacramento. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> we should make a short film. Okay. <laughs> she just... We can add that to the list. <laughs> yeah, because we don't have enough that we've already planned. Right. You know what? 
Patterns for layering, no matter how you use them, I think you're gonna find you get great, great results. We certainly did. We learned a lot while we were playing with them. And yeah, I think it's time to say goodbye, Gracie. Time to say goodbye, Gracie. Yeah, try out, get, what did we say that was, 12 of them? 12. 12 patterns for layering, ranging from very, very small to medium to kind of big and all kinds of different shapes. So yeah. lots of variety there. You're not gonna be bored, I promise. Right. All right, all take right. care. We'll see you Bye. soon. Bye, see you in the fall. Yeah.